Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy here. I'm a self-taught software developer. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the biggest mistakes you're gonna to wanna to avoid when creating your portfolio of applications, right? That's really designed to get your first software developer job. So this idea of your portfolio is really important, right? Like if you wanna get your first job, it's the one thing that you have that's truly concrete that you can give to a potential employer and say like, hey, this is what I can do. Like I can prove it to you. This is what I built. If you want to ask me any questions about it, like here is my, my, my basically my everything I've got. Right. So it's very important. So you definitely want to make sure that you get it right. As they say, you want to make sure that you're doing the right things and you're able to show off the right skills. And so with that in mind, I've seen a lot of people make a quite a few mistakes with their portfolios in just the general planning of it and implementation. So I just kind of want to dive in and give you a basic overview of what I've seen people do in terms of mistakes. So hopefully you can avoid it. All right. So the number one mistake that I see a lot of people make when they're designing what their portfolio of applications is going to look like is not 100% buying in from the beginning, right? So when they throw out, they're like, hey, I'm going to make four JavaScript apps and they're going to have Angular and you know Node and MongoDB and they're going to have all these different aspects of it. Well, when they lay out their, their basic blueprint for what they want their portfolio to look like, they kind of doubt themselves, right? They're like, you know, I put these out there, but I don't really believe in it. And so what happens is what I've seen consistently happen over time is that as they go to build their applications, they quite quickly lose motivation. Because when things get hard, your, your emotions start to turn on you, right? Like you start to doubt yourself. You start to, you start to look around and read more blog posts about like what the hottest programming language is, what the hottest framework is. And, and then you go, man, I don't know anything. Like if I don't know anything, then how could I possibly design a portfolio of applications that is going to make sense? So this is honestly one of the most common things I've seen from people I've talked to thus far. So there's no quick fix to this. Like truly there's no quick fix, but I can give you a strategy that I think works best for people. And that is basically this. One is when you do the requisite research to create your, you know, to really lay out the blueprint for your portfolio of applications, just buy in, just buy in 100%. Just trust that you have made the best decision based on what you could at the time, right? Because you don't know anything at the time and look, so that's what you're going to do without any proper guidance, without any more information. That's what you can, you know, again, if you, maybe you can shoot it out to people who you know, maybe you can shoot out to people who are software developers and they give you a little more guidance. But once you've done that, buy in 100%. Don't doubt the pro like the plan of the process, okay? Now, here's the caveat, because you're all probably gonna be like, wait a minute, you can't change your portfolio applications? That's crazy. No, no, of course you can. Here's how I'd recommend you make changes. Start with your first application. It's gonna take you a while to build. For me, it was Tetris. That took a long time. Once you get done with that process, you build it 95% or 100% to completion. Then you, you look up, you look around, and you reevaluate what the rest of your portfolio looks like and whether you should change things. Right? So instead of changing every day, like looking up and being like, is this right? Is this right? Is this right? Is this right? You just, you, you complete your first app and then you reevaluate. Okay. So that's the, the way around it. Trust in the process. Trust that, you know, you're making the best decision based on the knowledge that you have at this moment. You should be constantly looking for help from others, whether they are mentors. So look, that's, that's the basic gist of it. There's no quick fix solution. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe, you know, like somebody else can promise that to you, but I, I this is the best way that I have found to deal with it is just to like trust in the process, um, buy into what you're going to do and just move on from there. All right. So the second mistake that I see a lot of people make when it comes to their portfolio is when they're actually building out their portfolio of applications, they are focusing more on progress than they are on the process. So what I mean by this is typically what I'll see is people who are really focused on the results aspect of their portfolio, right? So they, let's say they have four portfolio applications and they look at it as if, if I finish the first one fast and the second one fast and the third one fast and the fourth one fast, I will have, you know, completed the curriculum and um, I will become a software developer faster. And that's, you know, I guess like logically, I think that makes sense to a lot of people. Like if I can create four apps in a week or four apps in a month that somehow you will have learned everything you need to know to become a software developer, right? But the truth is that if you are looking to create portfolio as fast as possible, then you're going to be missing out on a lot of the finer details that are necessary and required for you to really learn the nuts and bolts of being a software developer, which to me has always been come down to problem solving and learning how to best solve problems through code. And so I've seen people rush through their portfolio of applications and get so worried about the time requirements, but by the time they're done, they're actually not really that good of software developers. 
they've taken shortcuts basically to get to the end and they go, look, I've got my four applications, like let's go get a job. When in the truth is what I've actually seen to work for people is taking as much time as you need, you know, within reason, <laughs> let's not get crazy here, but ta you know, taking as much time as you need to work through your applications to complete them and really focusing on doing things correctly. Really what I mean by that is just focusing on problem solving and making sure you're working through all the issues in that application while you're there, right? Because it's very tempting to get enticed by getting started on your second application or your third application as opposed to working on what you have now. A lot of times you're like knee deep in a stupid bug, in a stupid, silly bug for like a week. And man, if you could just get through this one bug, you can move on to your next app. But it's like, no, that is the life of a software developer. I cannot tell you how many times in my day job that I get stuck in some of the stupidest crap you'll ever imagine. Like things that, you know, I, I am a good software developer, but man, some of the issues that I have or run into, you would think I'm just a kindergartner, right? Like in terms of my skill level, but no, it's just, that's the life of a software developer. So when you want to skip that process and you want to move along faster, you're only hurting yourself and you're learning. Really, as I've said in another video, the uh, portfolio is all about you, right? So the portfolio is all about you. It's not about what you're gonna show off to employers, at least it's not primarily, right? That's not the primary responsibility of it. So that portfolio is for you to learn. And if you only view it as a course that you have to take or some sort of module, learning module that if I can just get through it, I'll be done faster, like no. You need to sink your teeth into the learning. You need to sink your teeth into the problems that you run into and really work through them instead of rushing. It really goes back to my rushing video. If you've not seen that, it's a great video talking about like why are you in a rush all the time? But this idea of prioritizing the process, right? So the every the day-to-day -day process that you're going to execute on versus the amount of progress you're gonna make on a day-to-day -day basis. If you can really, really focus on the process, I guarantee you that your results will get better. You actually will probably be faster in terms of your results because you're not coasting through things and you're really soaking up the fundamentals of, you know, again, programming, problem solving, the important stuff. And, and overall, I think it's really, honestly, just try it for a little bit. Just try changing your frame of mind and I think you will get a lot out of it. All right, so the third mistake that I see people make when it comes to their portfolio is not completing all their applications 100% to completion, right? Do you only hurt yourself by not completing your applications? Sure, you could still get a job with, you know, an app that's 50%, another one that's, you know, 90%, another one's a 75%. But the truth is that you are only cheating yourself by not completing your applications. And it's not be why you think. It's not because, you know, you got to brush your teeth every night and it's just a good thing to do, right? Like it's, it's everybody, it's just a good thing to do, right? Like I don't I don't believe in that. It's more like this. Typically, when you haven't finished your application 100%, it's because you didn't want to work on the hard parts of the application. Sure, the easy parts you, you figured out now, like maybe you're really good at setting up a UI, maybe you're really good at setting up a database, but maybe there's some part of that application that you really need to learn, that you set out to learn, but you don't want to learn it and that's really hard for you. So what you said is, look, I got the, I got the UI done, like it looks good, it has some functionality, but this other part doesn't work and I, I know it's gonna take me a while, it's gonna take me like two weeks, why don't I just move on to the next thing, right? And okay, so you move on to the next thing, and you, but the thing is you'll keep doing it and you get to the end, you've got like four apps in, in, that are look like they're completed and you're like, oh, they're completed, but each one still has glaring uh, problems with them. And you've avoided the hard work to learn those things that you don't know, that you need to know, that there's skills that you're going to want to be able to talk about in a job interview or that you're going to want to be able to demonstrate in a job interview. So you've skipped all of those things and now you're gonna go back and complete them all? Like, good luck. I I've, have I've yet to see that many people who actually go back and work through all those things because it adds up. It adds up. It's the, to, to actually go through all of your applications one by one and complete them is going to take you another couple weeks, another couple months when you think you're all finished with your portfolio but you're really not. So here's the thing. Here's what I say to people. Here's what I say to people who are even in my mastermind program. Get as close as you can to completion. There should not be any glaring, glaring bugs or glaring gaps in functionality. If you're gonna move on to your next application, it better be because you are in serious like emotional pain. Like this, this app is calling you, causing you emotional pain. You're really losing enthusiasm. Then yes, it's probably a good time to move on to the next app because you do need to keep your enthusiasm up. But you're playing a very tricky game and you need to know that because it is so rare that people actually do wanna come back and do their portfolio applications when they are done with the whole thing. 
Like seriously, go ahead, go ahead and don't follow my advice on this. But when you know when that when you run into this problem that I'm telling you about, then let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I can be like, yes, I'm right. Or you can uh, obviously rub it in my face. Maybe I'm totally wrong about this. And you're like, no, I actually did finish my all my portfolio applications at the end. So whatever it is, here's what I'm saying. It's just easier to make sure that you're doing each one to completion uh, while you're doing it. So that's really my three main mistakes that I've seen that people have made in their portfolios that have really led to a lot of lost time, a lot of uh, you know just general falling off, uh, losing motivation, losing enthusiasm. So. I really hope you avoid these three mistakes. Let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Have you found that you know, you've made mistakes in the past as well? Uh, other than that, go ahead and like the video and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications anytime I put out a new video. And hey guys, just to let you know, I've created a free report on the top programming languages to learn for 2019. If you want a copy of that report, go ahead and go to andysterkowitz.com forward slash report. You're gonna sign up for my email list where I'll give you all updates. Anytime I put out a new YouTube video, um, any other content that I think you'll find really valuable, because uh, I know YouTube doesn't always give you notifications when I put out new videos. I've just, I just heard that from a commenter the other day. So signing up for that email list, getting that free report is a way to make sure you're getting updates whenever I put out a new video. Other than that, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support and I'll see you guys later.